How's everybody today? Pete here from Spawn Fly Fish, and I know you guys are just as excited as I was about the new Barbie movie. <laughs> so today I decided to splurge a little bit into the Barbie pink world, and we're going to tie Barbie's dream fly. Enough said. Grab your stuff. Let's go. All right. In the vise today, we're looking at the A-Rex SA274, and this happens to be a size 4. And I know it sounds fun and it's going to be a fun fly, the Barbie dream fly and all, but does it have a real purpose? Oh boy, does it. Coho season is right around the corner and this is going to smack them. So let's get into this. Got some thread here, right? Vivas 140 fluorescent pink. Love this color. Love this thread. Let's nip off our tag end. As you can see, I've gone just slightly into the curvature of this hook. So we're going to be tying this uh, to ride point up for the trailing hook. We're going to have a, a jig shank from spawn here in the front. So keep in mind, this is going to be our finished hook, if you will. So what I'm going to do is give a little two-tone tail. So for the top color of the tail, I've got some fluorescent bubblegum pink. And this is a marabou from Nature Spirit. And all I'm going to do is get a, a nice even section of this feather kind of matched, matched up like a little ladder there. And then I'll just bunch it up, rip it down the quill, and that's going to be the top portion of our tail. Let's see if I can give you a preview here. And, and if these fibers don't all stack exactly the same length, that's actually beneficial. Nothing in nature is going to be cut off at an exact length or measurement, but as far as where I'm measuring, I've talked about this in the last video. I've got little clues and different things on my vise that I use to measure. And so for this, hard to explain, but where the handle knob is there, that's my measure for a tail. So I'm just going to line that up like so to hang out so that the tips are just past that. And by all means, you could do this all on one side and just do a double stack of marabou. But I like the way it goes around the hook shank and it keeps my my shank even all the way for that underbody. You do you. I'm quirky and this is what makes me happy. Alright, and there we go. Top portion of our tail, that fluorescent bubblegum pink. Screams coho. It screams let's go Barbie. All that good stuff. And yes, at some point today I might bust out into song. So you guys better be nice. I guarantee you won't like me singing. All right, finish wrapping all that stuff down, flip her over, and now we're gonna switch over to a fluorescent light pink. You can see this is gonna be two-tone pink most of the way up here with some screaming pearl material in between. So this thing is just gonna be all kinds of glints of light and refraction, reflection, and then of course the pinks that we know these coho love and look for. So, yep, possible to have an effective fly, but still a fun fly. Who'd have thunk it? All right, all I'm gonna do now is stack right under there. So this will be the under portion at the end of the day, but for now let's just line it up, get it on the hook. And all I'm trying to do here is not let go of my pinch until my thread wraps are all the way back and covering. And now when I release, there's this seamless edge. We got light pink underneath and uh, bubblegum pink sitting nice on top. Trim out. Finish wrapping now. So all the feather play in this fly is going to be relatively simple. Nothing crazy to it. This next element, if there's going to be a level of difficulty, I, I think this is where it's going to be. So here we've got some chocolates, filler flash, and of course, pearl being the choice for today. So I've trimmed out just a little bit like any other chenille before you tie it in, expose the core just slightly, you really get a solid tie in. Oh, I don't like that thread wrap. Bring that guy back out. There we go. Trapped. Done. 
second wrap just in case and then come back to the front. And now, when I say there's a little difficulty in this, the fibers come out of that core they're directly onto both sides. So when you fold it back, everything is fine. And then as you begin to turn it, this core is going to want to spin and twist a little bit. It's okay if you have some fibers that are spiky instead of laid back, right? Because we're going to treat this like a feather where we pull all the fibers back and then begin to wrap. At any point, if this thing does turn on you, it's not the end of the world. Getting some of those fibers to spike out like that. They, they offer, one, different spots of, of the reflection, which is always a bonus. But the other thing it does is it, it's going to offer a little bit pro, of profile that wouldn't be there if all the fibers go back. So, I wouldn't say go about purposefully trying to do, tie it incorrectly, even though there is no incorrect on this. It's just that don't freak out if it's not what you're envisioning as a perfect wrap. There we go. We'll call that good enough. I've got my handy dandy bucket of water sitting here, so I'm going to utilize it. All right, let's get some really good tie down wraps here. We don't want this stuff coming undone. And now that I've got three solid wraps, I'll get my fingers in there, pull all the fibers back, get my thread in front of that core, and make a little thread dam. Now it's going to be easy, one, for me to cleanly cut out our chenille or our filler flash. And then the other thing it does is any of these little fibers that were loose and wanting to spike and not go the right direction, we've already half tamed them. So I'm going to get my fingers wet again, come in here, brush them all back, and now I'll do another little cleanup, if you will, with my thread. I'm going to build a nice little thread head right there. Easy peasy, nothing to it. A couple whip finishes and our trailer hook is complete. Alright, liking that so far. So let's get some head cement in here. Cover our thread wraps. And yes, I would have put a pink shirt on to tie this, but I wanted there to be a little contrast so you guys could still see what's going on on our awesome Barbie's dream fly. All right, there's the tail section. We're rocking and rolling, folks. Make sure that tail is, is looking the way we want it to. There we go. It's a little mashed down because my fingers were wet. But by the time we bring that back into play, it should be pretty dry. So let's get to the front portion of this fly. So I'm putting in the vise now a 60 degree jig shank from Spawn. This is 20 millimeter. For my bead, I've got the Spawn football slotted tungsten bead. And this is 7.5 millimeter in fluorescent pink. Now, what am I going to do to keep that bead from moving? I'm going to do something with a dual purpose, which is 0.020 non-lead wire. I'm going to start it kind of underneath the arm here, and I'm looking for our 10 wraps. Once I get 10, I'm going to scoot this wire back and go for five more. So I have 15 when I'm all done. Now I'll cut that front portion out. And turn it over, put the bead onto the neck of the jig shank, and now it's not going to move. I can go about my business and not mess with that bead. Cut the front, round it over. At this point, don't cut the back. Just get that thread gently pushed into the back side of that bead like so, and if you give a little twist twist, you'll get one or two wraps to go in. So now what I'm looking at is where this arm comes down. I don't want to hit on top of my weighted wire, I would get rid of one, squeeze down, and guess what? I'm going to come right behind that one right there, and that's where I want to cut. So I cut this and round it. All right. Thread comes back in. I'm going to start it right behind the wire. There's my jam knot. Now I'm just going to creep carefully under the arm. So guess what? Now all I do is come over the arm. A little bit of pressure from the index finger is fine, but don't even really need it. Just continue down, be careful, don't hit that edge, come back. It's, it's down. Tag and of thread can be cut out. And 
that will just really solidify all the arm weighted wire wraps. I've got some X wraps coming in hot, two directions, 45 degree angle both. And now we'll start some straight on passes. I'm really going to crank this shank down, make sure there's no issue of spinning or anything coming undone. And that is a strong tie down right there. All right, next move. We need something to connect these now since I'm not going directly from shank to hook. And my choice of weapon for today is some 30 pound spider wire. And again, we don't carry spider wire here, but we do have braid, which is what spider wire happens to be. All right, I'm gonna tie this directly on the top of the shank. And if there's anything that you gotta be really picky about, it's that so that your trailer hook is tracking properly behind your shank. All right, two passes of thread, it's going nowhere. I want some highlight now, and so I've got some 3D beads. I've got one in white and one in fluorescent fuchsia. I do want that fuchsia to sit in the front so that we go from pink to pink to pink and all that good connection, so I'll slip that one on first. Followed by, of course, our white bead. And this is just going to help a give a little bit of contrast. It matches with the pearl and all that good stuff. But we do like little contrast spots throughout. Break up the monotony of that fly. All right. Now, last but not least, slip on our tail. And remember, hook point up. And there you go. So everything's connected. Now what I have to do is fold this wire over and simply come back through the top of both those beads. And at this point, cinch it up. How far? Again, I'm, I'm always that one to two bead width, if you will, before the shank. And so when it looks like you go to fit one more bead space in there, that's where I'm going to crank this one down. Again, 30-pound uh, spider wire, it gives you some movement off the back, still plenty strong. But once you get into like a 50-pound or heavier, it's really going to be stiff. So keep that in mind. That, that's going to help with... How far do I need to space this so that I still have movement on my trailing hook? All right. So this wire that we brought back over now is directly on top of our previous wire placement, or spider wire, I should say. So I'm just going to cut the end now of that loop that we, we've been passing in between the materials. At this point, I'll bring this back over itself one more time on both sides but I'm not coming on top anymore. I'm right next to it on uh, the left and right side of that little stack that we had made previous. And this is a, just a super, super strong way to make this connection. Nothing's going to tear that apart. It's not coming undone on you. And there we go. All right. Let's get some feathers going now. So let's come back here a little bit and... What we're going to do here is have a series of feathers wrapped, have that filler flash in the middle again, and then another identical set of feathers in the front. So in keeping with that same color scheme, I do have a bubblegum and light pink feather. As you can see, I've prepped them by tearing off the inside fibers so that as I wrap this, I'm against the quill. And when I do two feathers especially, I like that move because it's really going to give them both exposure as they wrap. And I do like the two-tone two pink here, so wrap that in like so. Go ahead and just wrap all that quill back in. No harm, no foul on this one. Don't need to trim a bunch. And so before I start wrapping this, I'm looking for three wraps total, but I am going to just slightly dampen those fibers. And this will help me control it much easier as I wrap. There's our first wrap already. And you can see it's just going to start releasing these fibers off. And the effect is going to be pleasing to the eye, especially if you're a coho. And keep those quills together as much as you can. Whatever one starts as your leading edge, try to keep that leading edge. And for me, on this fly, it's the light pink. There we go. So I'm going to finish up here on this portion of the wrap. So let me bring my thread back down so I'm ready to, to catch that. And before I come up, I want a clean V where the quill is going to be tied down. And 
and I'll show you what I mean here. When I bring this up now, the fibers that I'm going to keep on the fly are all part of the body. They're flowing over the back portion of the fly. Anything I don't want tied in is now held against these quills. And so this little spot right here is my clean V. I'm going to get my thread wraps in there to tie this down. And after about four wraps, I can just jump in front and cut these out. Nothing's going to move out. Nothing's going to slip out. That's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to comb these fibers ever slightly because I do want to make sure that they're evenly distributed around the shank. Once I see that they are in the right spots and they're going to dry out the way I want them, just finish tying down that quill. A little bit back onto the, some of those fibers there at the bases and call that good. All right. Let's get back into some filler flash now. I'll, I'll do the same, treat this like any other chenille or feather, right? Trim out these tips and now you have a clean tie-in spot and these little fibers here that are still on are going to act like little, little hands to grab onto that thread, if you will. It gives it just a little bit extra to grab onto. That's a good thing for us. All right. And I'll come up. All right, same thing. We're going to get our fingers wet and just coax these fibers back as we begin to wrap. And we'll do it the whole time we're wrapping up. And this filler flash is nice. It's a little bit longer than a, a standard chenille. Uh, lots and lots of flash. The thin cut, I really like it. It really moves well in the water. And any ambient source of light is just going to pick up on it and just flash, flash, flash and give those fish plenty to think and, and consider. They're just going to react and next thing you know, you're screaming for your buddy to get the net. That's a good problem. All right couple more wraps in here and keep in mind we're we're going to finish up with that marabou in front so of course it's going to cover anything if you don't quite get this uh, filler flash exactly where you wanted it how do you solve it well honestly you could you could solve it with either one less or one more wrap of those marabou feathers so keep that in mind unless you're commercially tying and selling your flies like these are going in your box make it yours and then there's really not too many wrong answers at the end of the day. All right. So now I'm going to get these last few fibers here, get my fingers wet again, and slightly help hold those there. Create a nice little space here and give myself plenty of room for this finishing of our marabou collar. So again, same two pinks, bubble gum and light pink. And on this one, I'll match the previous, which means I stack the light pink on top of the bubblegum pink. And the only reason is, even though they're both coming off the quill at the same time, both feathers wrapped at the same time, I like the idea of having that top feather be the contrast against my bead color. So in this case, it happens to be the light pink that I'll put on top, uh, with the idea being the light pink ends up behind the, light, the darker pink here of the bead. situated. Big thing here, you don't want them to start turning on you because once they start they don't want to stop. All right, moist fingers, a little, little moisture on these fibers and let's wrap them up. There's one. Keep those feathers, keep them trained. They, they need to be told where to go and what to do. So don't, don't let them go anarchy style here. Just take your time. There we go. that one and we got one more to really fill this front portion up and we're looking for lots of flow on this fly and as we come up here at this point I'm going to create that clean V against the quill and so you can see I'm just slowly coaxing those fibers out leaving the ones that are already involved in the fly body and eliminating the ones that are against the quill that I don't need to tie in. And right there we are. Some really 
some really good wraps here to trap that quill. Once you've got them, bring it back over itself, a couple wraps in front of that, and you can trim those quills out, like so. And so you can see our marabou is still a little moist here. Good. Use that to your advantage. Get those extra wraps, finish tying down those quills. You have your, your clean thread dam or thread neck now. Let's go ahead and whip finish. There's the first one. We're going to put two in. Coho are nasty. They're big and strong. Prepare well. And that means good thread wraps, good, good whip finishes, and absolutely some good cement. And again, we've got the Loon Hardhead Clear here. Just going to cover up these thread wraps nice and evenly. Make it as pretty as we can. A little added pressure. Remember, this isn't just our fly and for the coho. This is Barbie Dream Fly. We better make it pretty. Almost done here, folks. I hope you guys really enjoy this one. I hope you tie some of them up. Um, change up the colors to match what you're fishing for. This tied in chartreuse would be fantastic for some Chinook fishing. And now I'm just going to slightly start releasing some of this marabou so you can see the finished effect here as we spin. And all that's just going to move and breathe and really entice those fish to come in and, and to have a bite. So again, thanks you guys, thank you for watching. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And we will see you guys on the water.